it's not for it to be given to you. You have to ask, yes, and add value. Mm. If you're not adding value, too bad. You know, there's someone else who's working harder than you. You know, it's the same concept that I talk about AI. AI has a significant amount of impact. It's not the AI that's going to take your job. It's a person who knows how to take AI. Yep. So you're sitting next to each other. If you write for me a bogus email and someone else writes an impactful email, I'll gravitate towards this person. Mm -hmm. We're having some incredible side conversations. Hey, the behind the scenes is so good, so impactful. So normally when the camera stops, we take a quick break, refreshing, and then sometimes we end up beating stories. I'm like, guys, on the camera. <laughs> on the camera, behave, or my and Izo. <laughs> uh, and our makeup person. Hey, today we got a makeup person in the house. Anyway, let's continue this conversation. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're loving the value. I still want us to... There's, there's a long way, there's, there's a lot still to cover. We're in 2000 and just before 2007. But I have this yeah. question to ask. What's your driving force at PW, P, PwC? Eh? Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Uh, What's your goal? Uh, so I have two kids at this point. And, you know, as I'm having conversations with some of the people who, you know, had older kids, they said, hey, school determines everything. So at that point, I'm like, I need to be able to make sure at least I can be able to pay for my kids in Wake Forest, which is $60,000. Whoa. So my driving so, force is making sure that I give them a good life. First and foremost, education is free in the States. No, it's not. It's in, in, in public schools, it's not. So, so pri well, elementary, middle school and high school is free. Yes. Uh, when you go to college, you pay for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. There's a state program, state you know, school that you pay for it, uh, and then there's a private school program that you pay for so at this age what, what what is it that you want to pay for the the university or yes the, or, oh, okay the yes. ones that you're talking is university yes yes so for example duke is a private school okay uh so duke uh you know it could pay 60 70 thousand a year okay really good program because the school determines where you end up yeah yes and i'll talk about my stint at harvard as well because uh, it's really important Along the way, you find things that work for other people in any environment, and you append, you know, whatever you're doing at that point in time to make sure at least you continue to add value. Mm. Yes. Wow. Okay. One last question about this PwC period before we transition. Yes. Do you rise up the ranks? Yes, I moved up the ranks, uh, but the way I was able to move up the ranks was to go and have an engagement outside my region that was a tough engagement, which was Freddie Mac at that point. Uh -huh. So Freddie Mac is in uh, the, the DC suburbs, uh, a little further out. So I needed to do the commute back and forth. They were having a little bit of financial trouble. They needed to do a restatement. Yeah. So they needed people. And again, I rose down my hand. I said, hey, let me go ahead and do it. Sacrifice to the family, but at the same time, great exposure from the outside. And you had not been to DC before in terms of work? I had been in smaller organizations, mm. but this was the first biggest financial services that I was doing from a PwC perspective. And what were you doing for them? Auditing? Uh, so external audit. Wow. And helping out from a restatement perspective. So uh, what that means is that, let's say financials were saying you made this amount of money, and you know we've determined that there was a problem along the way. Mm. So you need to be able to evaluate the impact of a problem and then do a restatement if need be. Wow. Yes. So when you say you go, yes. you, it's not you and your team. Yes. It's you. It's me, yes. So in Big Four, the way it works is that uh, you're solo in terms of utilization. You need to meet your utilization goals. You need to have your career aspirations and goals and share them with your leadership. And I was like, hey, I want to do something a little bit difficult. Again, that exposes me to a different world. And that's what's going to give you the edge. So were people raising up their hand for this or were you alone? Uh, there were a couple of people who were raising their hand. So what made yeah. them pick you and not the rest of the team? A, a couple of people also got picked up and went to D.C. Okay. Uh, I think for me, I was looking at it, hey, this is a conduit into D.C. It's a new world. Let me be able to learn from it the best way that I can. Okay. I'm always looking for those challenges. Yeah. Yes. Because those are the challenges and the experiences that will prepare you when you asked, how do you add value to this environment? Ooh, I love it. Okay. Yes. Continue with the story. 
yes. Uh, so moved up to, and I worked on this engagement. It was tough, long hours. Uh, but it was different, something different about the DC area. Uh, it was a melting pot of people from the rest of the world. Mm. And there was a lot of uh, cohesion, I would say. Mm. Uh, just generally, accepting people who were transient, who worked for the World Bank, who worked for uh, IMF, uh, people who were coming in to work at the embassies. So it just happened to be, felt like there was a lot of congruence. They had fine-tuned how people engaged with each other, so my accent wasn't sounding different. Mm, mm. Yes, and I felt, hey, they were looking for genuinely good people, not one kind of person. And does this mean you leave your family yes. in Charlotte? Huh? Yes, yeah. so it's about seven-hour drive, you know, six-hour drive on a good day. You know, so I spent many weeks out in uh, McLean which is where Freddie Mac is. Okay, so you would go like on a Monday and you stay there? Yes, I'd stay there maybe over the weekend sometimes and sometimes I'd come back. Okay. Yes, the good thing is that they pay for your flight back and forth. Yes. So sometimes I'd actually f pay for my family to come up to DC mm. and we'd check out the monuments. Wow. But it was busy, uh, it was rough. Anytime there's a restatement, there's so much that you need to learn about the ecosystem, so much about the people. Uh, the technology, the processes, to contextualize what you're looking at. Um, so what does this, do, do you succeed in that endeavor? So I succeed, yes, in the short term, but I also build a lot of really good relationships. And what's, what year is this? 2008, 2009. Okay. Market crashed in 2008. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> so there was a little bit of it actually in 2007 a little bit of a remnant of 2004, 2005 restatement, mm. uh, 2007, 8, and 9. And then I transitioned into Freddie Mac. Ah, had he pushed yes. you? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I like this guy. But what, what was 2008? Explain to somebody who may not understand um, the context of what happened in 2008, how pivotal it was for your industry. Um, yeah. So uh, what happened is that... Uh, there was an aspect of what you'd call easy loans in the early 2000s. Uh, let me give you a mortgage, and based on that mortgage, I'll say valuation of your house is a million dollars. And then I'll say, hey, do you have any documents for your loan? The loan, where do you work? We'll be like, hey, well, I think we trust he knows what he's doing. And you know, a lot of people would take the information and then have the mortgage and then sell it to the secondary mortgage market, which was Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, let me step back a little bit. The purpose of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae is buying mortgages from uh, banks, banks and lenders mm. so that banks and lenders can continue to lend to other people. So you sell your mortgages to Freddie and then they give you a billion dollars that you are supposed to lend to other people and then securitization of those mortgages and selling them to investors. Mm. Investors are all over the world. Yeah. Uh, so what ended up happening is that there was a little bit of relaxed oversight on some of that uh, security, well, underwriting that was happening for the mortgages. Mm. And it ended up a lot of them didn't do well. And the projection was mortgages are always going up. So the idea is that if I get a mortgage that's a million dollars today, if I look the trajectory based on historical view, it's going to be 20 or 30% more. So you're going to be able to turn around and sell it. Mm. Uh, but it turned out to be, you couldn't be able to do the same thing. The economy tanked, and it was a huge impact to Freddie and Fanny. Wow. They were the center stage of everything. You can watch a couple movies, Margin Call yeah. is one of them. Uh, they just show the extent of it. Uh, again. Who are those guys who shot suck it the, the, the thing in one? I watched that. I watched that. Uh, Movie, interesting. Yes, yes. So we are the center of it. Uh, at that point, what they realize is that we need to get underneath of what's happening at Freddie and Matt Fanny. And they were looking for good talent. Uh, I happened to be, uh, given that I was working for PwC as an external auditor, uh, it took a while before the transition because there are always all these independent issues. Mm. Uh, so it took a while, me getting off uh, the Freddie engagement for a while. Uh, then I came back when I was given the opportunity to actually come full time. I think there's like 90 day cool off period and you can't work on certain things that you were working on before. Yeah. So they had to do their due diligence. 
But eventually I was brought in to help out in terms of building uh, the automated controls uh, framework and testing. And now this is in? 2009 and, and 2010. And now this is in Washington, D.C.? Is Washington, D.C. So family? Yes. To Hamitana. I tell Penny, hey, uh, she had a job with uh, Wachovia, she loved it, now Wells Fargo. Like, Come on in. Kujeni, let's start afresh. So a lot of this is happening because <laughs> also the kids are, are little. Yeah. You know, so it's easy to have that disruption when they're little. When they get to a certain age, it becomes difficult to move. Can I ask, you yes. don't have to answer this because now I know yes. we're entering figures. Yes. But what does a pain like that look like? Uh, it's comfortable. <laughs> but, but DC is considerably more expensive, expensive. than Charlotte. Yes. yes. So it's about 30 or 40% more expensive. Okay. Yes. And does your pay increase by 30 or 40% more? Yes. Okay. But what is happening is that I'm looking to learn more and more. Because mm. at that point, if you can think about it, is that it used to be a really stable company and now there's a little bit of shake off. Yep. When it happens, people are leaving. And then when leaving, there's more opportunity for the people who are in there. So I ended up spending a good amount of time in there on the first line, which is actually doing the work itself in the data management organization. I ended up doing staff on the second line, which is oversight to the first line. Mm. Uh, technical people will understand what I'm saying. And then third line. So plenty of opportunity for the duration of time that I was there. Wow. How, yes. long were you, how long were you there? Uh, counting the external audit part of it, 12 years. 12 years? Yes. Yes. Bro, why are, you, why are you about to fast forward this thing like it's yes. this? And one of the things that we yes. have to talk about, yes. I can't even believe that we didn't even say this. Our brother man, Obizo, yeah. joined, <laughs> joined, became the president, a.k.a. Barack Obama. Yes, yes. So That's 2000, a big one. 2008, it was good to be in the D.C. area. I was like, these guys are giving me the opportunity. I need to go in there. This is good, you know. Uh, and he was a strong proponent of who we were as a company. Uh, as an organization in terms of, hey, we're the pillar to making homes available for the rest of America. Hmm. Uh, was there a government bailout at that time? Yes. For Wells, Wells Fargo? Yes, there was a government bailout all over the place, uh, but also there was a little bit of building capacity within the organizations, not just giving you money, but asking you to get the competent people who can be And that's where work. you come in as yes. one of the competent people yes. for oversight in terms of audit. Yes. Yes, yes. Bro, so yes. in an essence, this crisis was an opportunity for you. Yes. It made you extremely valuable. Yes, yes. And that's the thing is that if you prepare yourself for the next big thing, you know, do tough assignments when you still can, when you still have good knees, and then you'll get to that point where it's a championship and can you rise up to the occasion. But what does this look like in terms of work hours? DC must be a different monster. It's like, a, it's of all the different places that you've been, it sounds yeah. like now the one which is... You're pumping some yeah. serious iron in terms of yes. financial or, what, or, or, or in the space that you're this, working. This is uh, game six of the <laughs> NBA championship. <laughs> this, is, this is a big league. This, yeah. this is a big league. People have been doing this for a long time. Uh, and therefore, you're coming in. The good thing is that in an environment, they're looking for people who are competent. We're looking for good, good, good people who can be able to come in. In the South, it was slightly different in terms of, hey, we're looking for really good people who can be able to do the work. Uh, but this person came from Wake Forest, they have better relationship than you do. Somehow they'll edge you one way or another. In this case, they're like, who can chant things? And that was different, big leagues. Uh, I moved right across the office. I was like 15 steps away from the office. And that's why we ended up leaving for about 10 years. Oh. Small space, we all cramped into a small space. We loved each other. And then baby number three was born along the what, way. What baby number three was born when? 2012. So let me ask, actually yes. now, you know, CT, I like the holistic perspective. Yes. In a space like this, in the kind of pressure that you're, you're, you're facing, in the kind of environment, this, uh, how do you manage to keep a marriage working? So I don't let the small stuff, I don't sweat the small stuff. I've learned to shut off when I need to. Uh, it's very intentional to be able to do that. So when I go back home, I can tell Penny, and Penny can tell from having a conversation with me, hey, this guy is stressed out. Maybe we need more of like a pep top type, type hmm. of conversation. It's the same thing for her as well as she's, yes. she's working. Uh, so you learn how to adapt to each other's energy at a point in time. 
But also, hey, if it's small stuff that can be solved, I wouldn't bring it home. It's not stressful for me. Mm. Sometimes it's like, hey, what about this is happening? This is happening. Oh, why are you not, stre not stressing? I can handle it. Mm. I believe in myself and the abilities because I've practiced for game six. Mm. Yes, the championship game. Wow. Yes. I, at this time, your life doesn't even sound like the Kenyan community is involved. It sounds like you've you immerse yourself so much in this world that this version of what I and I'm yes. again I'm just yes. asking for my yes. lack of I'm, my deducing. Yes. Am I right? Uh, so there's a Kenyan community, but I don't spend much time. Mm. Yes, uh, I'd love to, uh, but at the same time, it's just so busy. And ukilala kidogo. Kishonga Kiradi, you wouldn't have the job anymore. So you have to hustle with the environment that you're in. Not saying that Kenyans don't hustle. It's just at this point, it's just we went in and we were right opposite uh, work. Church was down the street. And then we were busy with kids. Mm. We'd drop them off uh, for practice. We'd pick them up. I picked up coaching as well, uh, basketball, nice. football, soccer. Nice. Because, uh, you know, you also learn a lot. Wow. Yes. So life became busy. Yep, yep. Drop off, pick up. Uh, I would meet with Kenyan community once in a while. There's a place called Swahili Village. Yeah, is this in, in DC? There's DC one, but that time it was the Beltsville one. Yeah. Uh, so you'd meet up with a couple guys. And I also see, you know, a friend of mine always, he has a show called One Mike Show, uh, fellow Pacherian. So I'm able to see him on screen. Uh, so once in a while we talk. And he gives me the lowdown of what's happening in the community. What's happening in technology at this time? Are you are you reskilling? Are you upskilling? Are you are you increasing your value? Yes. So it happens to be. Uh, let me give you an analogy. There are five thousand people at Freddie, FTEs, five thousand. Uh -huh. uh, the balance sheet value is three trillion dollars. <laughs> I can't even fathom what that is. In, I can't fathom that. Yes. So what Did it you is say is trillion? that. Yes. What it is is that. A lot of decisions that are made use models. Uh, you know, let's say valuation, current state valuation of the properties that you have. Uh, because we have all these mortgages, which between Freddie and Fannie, we had about 60% of our properties. How do you value this for the sake of your balance sheet? Mm. A lot of this valuation happens to do, uh, it's happening through models. So this is a different world altogether. Mm. Now the models have assumptions. Models have limitations that you need to be able to understand. And that's one of the mandate that we had. The regulators came in and said, can you open up these models and tell us what's going on? It's a black box. Because okay. this is too much, it's very expensive to be able to do that. But that was a mandate that was given. So I ended up learning a lot more model risk management mm. that I didn't know in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's when it introduced the aspect of data science. Mm. Yes. Most of the modelers were PhDs from top schools in the, in the world. Uh, and, you know, they use mathematical equations to tell the story. So you needed to be able to say, hey, what is this in the context of what you're working on? And then there was a data science aspect of it, which was maybe understand a little bit of this, not everything, but I can put everything in context. Oh, yes. the disruption of technology. Yes, so that's the upskilling that I needed to do in that space. Mm, because you couldn't match up with these guys in terms of Yes. Yeah. Yes. But part of my team was people who were doing modeling. So I said, hey, what can I learn from you? What can we learn from each other? Yes. I ended up spending time on the first line, different teams within the organization. Yeah. But part of that was also organization. Uh, when there was a change, I'd be like, hey, I know this person. They know me. Um, and it would be easy for them to say, hey, come on in, work in my organization. In, 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 a, in, a, in, an, in an environment like that, to get a promotion, do you ask for it, or does your work have to show, or is it is it a, is it a, a bit of both? Because I've had people sit on this seat and be like, "Listen, I've been working and I wasn't given a promotion." So, do you ask? It's not for it to be given to you. You have to ask, yes, and add value. Mm -hmm. If you're not adding value, too bad. You know, there's someone else who's working harder than you. You know, it's the same concept that I talk about AI. AI has a significant amount of impact. It's not the AI that's going to take your job. It's a person who knows how to take AI. Yep. So you're sitting next to each other. If you write for me a bogus email and someone else writes an impactful email, I'll gravitate towards this person. Mm. So it's understanding the environment 
and knowing what wins and then gravitated towards that and just say, hey, I'm interested in this. Hmm. What are your thoughts? And they might tell you, hey, there's nothing now, but let's continue building your muscles. So do you get, a pro do you get promoted within your 12 years there? Yes. Once, get twice, promoted, three times? Get promoted to direct level three, four times. Wow. Yes. Okay, I'm not even yes. going to ask about how much you're earning. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, but the thing is... Out of respect also. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's also what I'm learning and the earning potential for me adding value in a new world that was more enticing for me. It's like, hey, there's these models. What are these things? This is interesting. I've never had to do this. Let me learn from you guys slowly and slowly. Mm. I'm very quick to be able to piece information and come up with something. Wow. So I can talk to four or five people and then come up with a, a conclusion. Yeah. I tell people there's an interesting story. Concubine was one of a set books that we'd learn in high school. Mm. I never learned it. Though a couple of people would ask, hey, tell me about this story. Tell me about this guy. The guy who was called uh, a really, really uh, diligent guy called Masaki. He would read this stuff. He would tell you this story. I'm like, tell me more. Tell me. And I'll talk to three other people and I'll be like, I know the answer. I was just a little different in terms of Sitting down and focusing, yes. <laughs> and that has helped me a lot. Now, what does that look like? So from a leadership perspective of your team, I understand in terms of you upskilling, I understand in terms of you adding value to yourself. Yes. But I know part of it must be team leadership. Yes. How many people are under you by the time you're getting these kind of promotions? Yes. Uh, a lot of the teams in financial services are very lean. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. So <laughs> And especially your 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 department of tech. Yes. Tech takes yes. the place. Yes, yes. You know, uh, it's like a SWAT team. You have people who are 15, 20 who are doing a fantastic job. But number one focus is making sure that at least how can I bring everyone along the journey? Mm -hmm. And then how can I learn from them? Let me give them the opportunities to be great. Once you show someone that you believe in them, they're going to work day and night for you. Mm. And it's not manipulating anyone but acknowledging people and helping them nurture through their career is really, really important aspect of leadership. Mm. And I think that's why I also do really well. Yes, I have a vision, I have a strategy. Now let me connect with the people. Let me connect with you. What makes you tick every day? Maybe what makes you tick in this duration of time? It could be, hey, I'm getting a baby and it's a little bit of, hey, let me call someone else to come in and help you. Mm. That's really, really important. You have to bring people through the journey. And that's when you have to have, you end up having the impact that you have. And what about with your bosses? How do, how, how do you deal then with that relationship? Because I understand it from, yes. from top down. What yes. about from the, 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 the opposite direction? You have to deliver. That's it, huh? You have to deliver, yes. How you add in value to understanding their unique position. Let's say they say, hey, I'm interested in this and this. This is what my vision is. They're already telling you what their vision is. And then my role is to make sure that at least you get that vision that you need. Because mm. if he's happy or she's happy, then you're happy. And then your team is the same way. So teaching people to align themselves with company vision and strategy is really, really important. Sometimes, depending with the level, you might be, not be able to see that. But making sure that I'm aligned with my boss's mm. view is really important. Um, I, I don't want to keep asking this question, so, yeah. but I just want to understand it. Um, because it's, it's the elephant yeah. in the room. Yes. What does then that look like from a race perspective? Again, it sounds like, are they, is the, is in DC, are there more people who look like you in the room? Or yes. now it's, oh, there? Yes, so okay, uh, DC, I think in the DC area, about 40% black people mm. uh, who from are across college the world? dedicated. College, who are college dedicated. dedicated, yes. More black Americans? More black Americans. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of West Africans as well. Okay. Uh, maybe first generation, second generation. Mm. Yes. So, uh, but again, if I go into a work environment, there might be, not be someone who looks like me. But what I'm doing is that I'm adapting to what the winning formula is. Mm. Hey, this is a technical group. We learn data science here. I got to retool mm. and be able to speak their language because otherwise you lose credibility. I get it. Yes. At yes. this time, have you come home? Uh, in Kenya? Yeah. Uh, the first time I came home was maybe 20, 2011, before that's, Leo was born, the last one. That's 10 years later. Yes. 10 years later. Yes, yes. And the world had changed. 